Hey, what's up guys? Uh, I wasn't going to make this video until the cube was completely done, but at this point it's just so cool I had to make a video of some kind to just give you an update because I still have a lot of work to do, but at least for now you can kind of see that, you know, it works and uh, just how cool this thing really is. So what we have here is the uh, 8x8x8 RGB LED cube. That's 512 LEDs right there. Fully controllable. Each LED has a red, green, blue component to it. With, and you can control through the Arduino a brightness on each one of those colors from 0 to 15. So 0 being all the way off, 15 being all the way on. So it's a 4-bit resolution. Over here, let's just go through the... I'll give you a quick tour of what we got here. So we have 10 control boards or what I'm calling control boards and once I start making my tutorial videos this will make more sense because I've given each of these boards a name because they're just so complicated um, everything here is controlled using an Arduino over here single standalone Arduino so if you you know those little blue boards the Duemi Lenovo um, I've taken all that off and made a little standalone version over here the entire cube is controlled get this using only four pins off the Arduino two for the SPI, and then two for the latch and uh, output enable. That's it, four pins. And it's really not loading it down too much either, so you can do a lot with animations. And I'm surprised so far that I've written a whole bunch of little demo animations here just to kind of uh, exercise the cube and see what it's capable of. And uh, so far I haven't had any weird issues where it overflows or gets into weird like memory problems. Okay, so we have the Arduino board, uh, we have three um, shift register boards for the red, the green, and the blue. So each of these boards here has eight shift registers, giving you a total of 24 shift registers. 24 shift red, 24 8-bit shift registers gives you 192 outputs, which go here to these transistor boards which I'm calling the cathode control boards because these are common anode LEDs. So the each cathode is the red, the green, and the blue, which goes to a transistor here that syncs the LED to ground. And we'll get into some more of the specifics here. I don't want to get too crazy in with it, but there's 192 transistors there. There is... Over here, the anode control board. This is what controls the power for each level. So there's eight P-channel MOSFETs there and, uh, and a shift register. So a total of the shift register controls each one of those outputs. So the way the cube works, it goes level by level by level and lighting up LEDs for each level. But anyway, we have... Uh, what else was I going to say? So that gives you 25 shift registers, 192 NPN transistors, plus a transistor for each one of the P-channel MOSFETs as well. So a total of 200 NPN BJT transistors. A lot of wiring, not really the most efficient way of doing this. Probably not great at, uh, for signal integrity either. In fact, I know it's not good for signal integrity because I've had grounding issues. After I built this thing, turned the power on, nothing happened. Uh, I had a few kind of goofy errors. I had a dead short between one of the t pins on the shift register, between two pins on a shift register. I had a grounding issue, and I still do have a grounding issue. In fact, it won't work unless I'm grounded to the scope, which is kind of funny. I don't know what the issue is there yet. Once I get the power supply, I'm sure I'll find out for sure. Which, by the way, that's one of the things that's not complete yet. As soon as I get a 10 amp power supply I'll be able to light up all the LEDs and make it really cool but right now it's running off a cell phone charger which is kind of only good for a few LEDs and that's what we got running here this kind of neat rain effect where it starts off as a, like a light blue and then fades into a, a reddish blue color it's kind of cool and it, what's amazing is this is all random it's nothing here is like programmed I didn't go through and program each one of these it's just a little simple you know, array of, of values and it's randomly picking things out and running it. So anyway, let me see what we got here. Let's run through. I'll show you a few other animations I can do here. I've got the laptop over here. And once I get the thing completely done and, you know, packaged up nicely, I'll make another video here to, uh, 
to show you some of the more cool animations where maybe scrolling text or you know some 3d effects okay so here's the same code as before but now and I hope the camera can pick this up probably not but this is the same code except now where each raindrop is its own color so it's kind of neat more of a random color Ooh, you know what might be cool too is right now I'm running it with uh, I think there is by the way this is probably gonna be a boring video so you can drop out anytime you want so right now I'm running um, how many LEDs am I running here and when I say LEDs, this is just this code I wrote. It's running, there's only eight raindrops at a time. We can go up to, let's go up to 30 and see what that looks like. And let's make them all green. I think that would be kind of cool. Give you sort of that matrix effect. That's what I love about this thing. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a screensaver on steroids. All right, I'm gonna make the all of the reds zero I'm gonna make all the blues zero and to make all the greens 15 okay so that'll be all green this should be kind of neat and there's gonna be 30 pick or 30 drops I guess what you what you can call it Oop. actually I think I screwed that up yeah I did made them all blue all right let's make them all green in fact I think that's probably too bright for the camera so I'm gonna just make it a dollar dollar green here I'll try that out okay there it is that's kind of cool 30 might be just a little too much too much here let's go down to 15 and try that out and we could change the speed and do all kinds of things so we'll get into the code too that'll probably be a later video because the code right now is really kind of rugged oh there it is so that's kind of cool all right, let's go up here. Let's try a few other animations because I wrote so many little demo animations. I should make one animation that kind of goes through all of the demo animations, but at this point, by the way, I just got this thing running like yesterday, so. All right, that was called Rain. Let's try this other one I call Bouncy. I don't know why I call it bouncy. I think what I was trying to do is, you know, like when TVs go into that, that screensaver mode or a DVD player and the, the logo sort of bounces off of everything. Well, that's what I was doing here. So that's kind of neat looking, huh? So that's like a little bug in there trapped in the cube. And it, it changes color every time it hits one of the edges or one of the sides or walls of the cube. Okay, let me see if I can edit bouncy a little bit here. I don't even know where that is um, because I did make a cool version of this where it it left a little tail well that'll probably overflow it okay yeah here we go okay I'm gonna do it now it's instead of it's gonna try to leave like a tail but because I'm using a, a cell phone charger as a power supply I can't light up too many LEDs at once otherwise it'll brown out okay so there's sort of a the same thing but it's leaving a tail of 20 LEDs and let me try to do one more thing here that's kinda cool I'm not gonna allow it to go backwards I'm only gonna allow it to go forwards and this would probably help if you actually saw my screen here as I'm coding this because I made the code very easy to work with. Yeah, there we go. That's kind of cool. So that's 20 LEDs. And then I think I did something else that was kind of neat. Yeah, I, I made like a flashing effect here. Let's try that out. This might look cool. So every time it, it blanks out, I, I change the code so that it does this neat flashing effect and I'm gonna try that real quick here oh did you see how it all turned white like that that was the power supply actually browning out on me so all right here we go yeah see that cool flashing effect it's kinda neat let's make it go like for 200 times make it a little bit brighter let's try this out Surprisingly, it, it's, it downloads the code into the Arduino pretty pretty fast. See that flashing effect? That's kind of neat. So anyway, all right, I could probably go on all day here and bore you guys to tears, but 
Um, just wanted to give you an update here and show you what the cube can do. Um, hopefully I'll have new videos uh, in the coming weeks. Probably first video will be theory, second video will be hardware. So we'll go into what all of these boards do and the actual components. Third video will be code, and then a possible fourth video would be to go into uh, sort of like a lessons learned, or give you some of the justifications as to why I chose um, the different circuit uh, methods and techniques here, because there's, there's probably a million ways to do this. Obviously, this isn't the most optimized or efficient way of doing it, but I'll give you some reasoning behind that. I think it's kind of cool the way I did it here because you could actually build this cube with all parts bought from Radio Shack if you wanted to. That would be crazy to do that because it'd be ridiculously expensive, but it could be done. So anyway, we'll get into all that later. I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on where the cube's at. Thanks for watching.